This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closure Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here today. And I'm really, really excited about this episode we're going to go on today. I'm really excited about the guest. We've got a, shh, got a secret being shared, a very successful secret, and something that I believe is going to affect each and everybody on this call at some point in the near or not too distant future out there. And I'm really excited. Our special guest is a, a guy who's been killing it. And this not only applicable to the note business, but also to those of you in Note Nation across the country that are listening or watching this that are in the traditional real estate side of things. And uh, I'm excited. We've got uh, my buddy, Philip Vincent, join us here from St. Louis, Missouri. No, wait, Kansas City, Missouri, right? Philip, well, sorry. Yeah, we're, so we're in Missouri, uh, Kansas City and St. Louis. That's right. So you're right on both fronts. Okay, all right, good, good, good. Uh, and he's got years of experience, been doing hundreds of deals. Uh, he's good friends with my buddy, Ben Rayo, up in that neck of the woods as well, I've known for years. Uh, and he is uh, literally going to show, share today how investors from all across the country can find the best leads for your business with a secret strategy that uh, helped him close on just 50 deals alone uh, last year. And so I'm really excited to have Philip Vincent join us here. Hey, what's up, Philip? Hi, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm glad to have you on. And so uh, before we give away the secret, everybody's excited about there. Talk a little about kind of your real estate background and kind of got to where you're at today. Yeah, I love to say that I started this business backwards. Um, I started when I was 20 years old building my first house. So I, was, I started with new construction and I graduated in 21 years all the way to wholesaling, which I find funny because everyone wants to start off at wholesaling and then they, what do they say every time? Do a couple wholesales, I'll put that money in the rehab, put that money in the, in the rentals, and then maybe I'll do new construction, right? So I did it backwards, and the reason why is the older you get, the real you figure out what you're good at or what you want to spend your time doing. And then, you know, I, I wasn't a very good adult babysitter, so I didn't really like the contracting side. Um, wholesaling is kind of fun because um, it's uh, always new. It's always ever-changing. It's not so monotonous. Um, I, I really like working with families. That's what I've succeeded at is – is trying to figure out that Rubik's cube of problems that they have and trying to get that put together for the families. And so um, it's, it's never a dull moment with helping families in uh, this, this time of need that I help them with. Yeah. And that's the thing is we've all got family. We're all getting older. And as they say, one of the, one of the top five market segments uh, is working with the elderly people that are, are getting older who need help in a variety of, of ways, whether it's health or healthcare or housing or working out, helping them with other things of that aspect, right, Phil? Yeah, so what, what I do is kind of a marriage of all those things that you just said. The, uh, the aging population, um, can, I, can, I give, can I give what it is? Kind of the detail? Yes, hang on, hang on a second. Can I give a drum roll, please, here? <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, simply put, I help the adult children of seniors that are moving mom into senior living. And if you've been in real estate long enough, you've already been helping this type of customer anyway. And, and I formalized that. Back in 2011, I said, we only did 66 deals that year. And I said, what is it about these 66 deals that's similar, right? I'm a, I'm a curious person. I'm always trying to find the fountain of leads, right? The best leads. I'm never content. Because if, if you're in real estate, you really realize you're in marketing very quickly. Yeah, yep. and, and it's never done. You know, we used to do the uh, uh, yellow pages and we'd get 10 deals a year. And that's graduated all the way down to one deal a year, you know? And so what did work doesn't say the same. And like today's trends are simply cold calling and RVM. That wasn't even a thing to me five years ago. Right. But with all of these trends, I call them waves, you know, and the thing about a wave is they crash. And so I feel like what I'm doing with helping those adult children moving into senior living, you want to talk about how big this market is, is that seven out of 10 people over the age of 60 are going to move into some sort of assisted care in their life. So keep in mind, that means that they're, they haven't passed away, right? They've just moved into, but that is the moment when they need to sell the property to pay for that care. It's not, you know, I love probate leads and we can talk about probate leads and I love them, but let me just share with you quickly how much better these are than probate leads. So 
Scott, let's say you and I are brothers and we lose mom and the house goes into probate because she didn't have her stuff set up right. So now you and I, not, it's not greed, it's just more what's in it for me and you. Yep. We're concerned about us, our concern, our, you know, about what's going in my pocket. With these leads, they don't, <laughs> I say they don't care. It doesn't matter as much if you pay 74 or 82 or 91 for the house because that money's going to mom's care, mm -hmm. right? So the kids are actually more inclined to go with somebody trustworthy and trustworthy that I say trustworthy, right? Because they don't want to be messed around with. Sometimes they go talk to the real estate. Everybody knows a real estate agent, right? The real estate agent comes in and says, clean this house out, right? There's a two month task. Rehab this house before I put my precious name on it. Right. And then I'll take pictures and then I'll sell it. So in a perfect world, you're talking about kicking the can six months down the road. And these families don't want that uncertainty. They just found out the mom's new care is 8,300 bucks, nine grand a month, you know, cause you're not, you know, let's talk about this American thing that is senior living. There is no senior living in China or India cause you move them in with your house. It's an American thing to do that. And so the adult children have this, this guilt built up. So what do you do about guilt? You like, if you, uh, if you have guilt, you try to over splurge for mom, you get her the nicest one and the nicest one's also the most expensive. It's funny how that works. Right. Yeah. And so that pressure where that's going to be paid for and from, um, very, very quickly we go back to the house. And so when I think about what a perfect lead is for me as a real estate guy and why I was so excited about this in 2011, when we kind of figured it out was that the two things I'm looking for are motivation and equity right? That, that's the perfect lead. And these are, these are those leads there. I was telling you earlier, I, you know, I've been keeping this a secret since 2011. The reason why is I didn't want anybody else to do it. And so in my curiosity about life and growth and as a human, as a person in business, uh, back in 2017, I kind of set out to say, if I do this much good for my community in St. Louis, what can I do at a nationwide level? Right. And so what I've started to do is create these relationships in the uh, big, in data, and getting to these leads even before, it's like, like I said, if me and you were a brother, uh, if we needed to help mom, do you think we're doing a Google search to help mom find senior living if we don't really need it? You know, no, of course not. We're not going to for that stuff, right? So when somebody does that search, they are, they need this situation to be handled right then. And those leads are the best leads I've ever found. And so what I'm doing now is trying to build out a nationwide network of trusted investors and and heavy on the trust side. Cause you said uh, earlier about those market segments where there's good money to be made or future. True, but what else do you know about the senior seniors? They're also some of the most taken advantage of yeah. groups. And so for me, the integrity side, the trustworthiness is, is, is more who I wanna work with than just anyone that wants to buy a real estate lead. That's not what I'm shooting for, you know? So that, that, that's what I'm working on with mom's house. That's awesome. I mean, it's, it's I, could not echo that ex more than what you said there is you got to help those folks they are taken advantage of unfortunately because a lot of times they may not know and, and are embarrassed to ask questions or to check or even talk with other advisors about stuff but also health you know if they're looking at that usually their health is deteriorating that's the number one priority let's get hey let's try to find the best health care how to take care of uh, ourselves or our mom and dad and, you know, they don't want to deal with having to fix the house up to get it moved, to get it listed. They'd rather have somebody come in and take care of that, yep. you know, and uh, make it a win-win across the board. Because most of the time, especially good senior health care is not cheap by any, any, any stretch of the imagination, especially if you've got deteriorating health and things like that. Too. And you don't want to put mom or dad in a roach motel either no uh, to, to do it. Um, you want to help out. Um, exactly right, Scott. Right. So where, so you're, you, how, are you generally leads straight off of uh, internet searches and then you're putting it in a database and then finding territories or how's that kind of working then for you? Phil? In essence, um, that's what we're working on. I would consider that like the phase two. So I don't want to jump the gun. What I'm, what I'm really doing today is finding those people that I might work with in the future for those leads. And so I'm, Louis, I want to, I'm teaching people right now what I've done to build that channel. And what's the, the, the sexiest part about the channel is that once you build it, it's free. You know, we spend a lot of money on all the other types of marketing. We don't need to list them all here, but every other type of marketing we spend money on, right? And they're good too. They have their attributes and why they're good and some are worse than others, but these are the best. And so I think the older I get, I'm getting to that point where I'd rather talk to 10 people and buy five houses than I would want to talk to 150 to buy five houses. 
I mean, yeah, that's the yeah. truth. More, more you can streamline things uh, and yeah. deal with uh, you know, motiv truly motivated people that want to make something happen versus those that are just tire kickers or kicking the can down the street is for sure, right? You got it. I'll give you a good example. Like all the, the, the phone, all the phone leads we're getting these days. What do they say? Well, yeah, I'll sell my house for the right price. Only, only every day do we hear that, right? That's not these type of leads. That's the exact opposite. That they need to sell the house. Their concern is mom's care. This guy is going to, if he does what he says, this takes a whole burden off of us. You know, it's just, you're fishing in the right pond. Mm -hmm. You know, we see, I could see this working because we get a lot of, uh, with us buying distressed debt, we see uh, a lot of uh, borrowers that are actually the elderly side of things that can't pay their mortgages or can't pay the taxes or they're, you know, they're living on social security and that, you know, we deal a lot with the, the, uh, the family members on negotiating with that house. Same thing, you know, like, Hey, let's work on something, you know, let's do a deed in lieu or some sort of fashion to help you out and let you walk on the stuff versus taking a foreclosure and not, not only being on win side. I mean, true win-win is what we all want out there. It makes things a lot better in life. Right. So I, I can see the, so, I'm sorry, say that again, Phil. I try for that every day to find that, that, uh, I feel like the money side in real estate is going to come. I don't worry about that as much. It's, it's if I help the cu customer the right way and keep my reputation in the senior living that I know the greater good is still coming. Because think how big of a deal it is when a, a $50 million senior living community refers to you. Mm -hmm. How much trust they have to have in you, right? And so, um, you know, like the bandit sign, got nothing against bandit signs, but like I look at a person that puts out bandit signs versus what I'm doing, they couldn't be further apart from each other. You know? <laughs> Such so shady guy in the corner. They want to buy a watch for me. Come on, yeah, from, from an old person. Are you kidding me? It's like, oh, can we not? Can we make this any worse? You know. And so that's what I'm really teaching is down to the granular level of how all the stakeholders in this senior industry, which is very insulated, wants to be dealt with. And if you unlock it, it's magic. It's it's mm -hmm. really the best thing I've ever found in, in our business. That's what I'm so excited to talk about. Mm -hmm. Are you? Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you are, but besides just the local senior living facilities there in Missouri, you're reaching out to other places in the country? Yes. Yes. And building nationwide networks. And so um, there's a lot in the, uh, the, the data side of when you're starting to go through this with your family, what types of searches you're doing. And, you know, you get caught in these webs of um, this is the time that they need to be talked to. Right. And for me, everything with marketing, it's a timing thing. Right. If, if the timing is right, we we have a value. And if it's not then they're not really that good at leads. And so um, even like, you know, like the driving for dollars, let's, let's, you know, I love driving for dollars. I love them. They're great. But because you drove down the street and that house looked crappy and you put it on your list, that house might've been crappy for 20 years. Yeah. It doesn't mean they need to sell. Right. And with, and with most other things, it's like, even like, uh, I'm not, I'm not here to bash other types of marketing, right? That's no, not, no, no, no. we're not at all. Yeah. Comparatively, these have been the best. Cool. Are you, uh, have you found any correlation in with your borrowers or sorry, with some of the homeowners having second or not second mortgages, reverse mortgages? Because yep. that's often an elderly a product for quite a bit of time. Seen that? I do. And so um, one out of 10 might have had a reverse mortgage. And I'm going to tell you right now, every one of those one out of 10 doesn't understand what they had. Yeah. Almost every time. And it's like, no, they're like, no, we don't have a mortgage. And then it turns out they owe 140 grand. It's like, how do you, how do you, where, you know, and, and, and I don't know who to blame on that one. I just know that industry, I don't think they understand what it is. And by the way, if there's a reverse mortgage, I always say that the, that was probably the best thing for mom anyway, because she got to stay in the house longer. Yep. So good for her, right? You know, there, there isn't equity anymore, like there used to be, but good for mom that she at least, is it, I don't know if that's winning or not. I'm not old enough yet to tell you the answer, but I think staying in my house as long as I can is the win in this life. I, I'm not, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll let you know in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think that's right. I mean, the United States is such a different as animal compared to other countries where, uh, you know, other countries are elderly are uh, worshiped or taken care of. It's the whole goal to have the parents live with you to take care of them, to show that respect that they've earned over time versus here in the United States. It's, it's, it's such a different, different animal. It's not that case, which is unfortunate. It says a lot it's about a our society as a whole. Yeah. It's a throwaway society. Yep. It's, it's sad. Um, <clears throat> but that's the, the, you know, that's the one thing mom and dad don't want to stop driving. They don't want to stay home. You know, they like that independence, no matter how old they are, for, you know, I don't think anybody of us want to go through that on a willy aspect of things. So anytime you can help them out and um, 
and and make sure it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a true win and and trustworthy and help them out of a bad situation because the most of these elderly don't have the time they don't think they've got the money to to fix the house up you know they like the brown shag carpet from 1970 in there they've lived in it for years it makes for an opportunity for both places to come out smelling good and then doing really a lot of good what's been um, you got any i'm sure you've had some amazing stories uh from some of your your clients you want fun ones, bad ones, weird ones? What do you want? I got let's them do, all. Let's do, a, let's do a good one and then a weird one. Why don't we talk about that? Because everybody loves stories. Good one? I saved a lady from getting catfished one time. Oh, let's talk about that. So she wanted to sell her house. I find out why. She's moving from a nice house that's paid off into, into uh, like an uh, independent care. Yeah. And she needed to unlock that money to send it to her boyfriend in Africa. Who had, was working on a five hundred million dollar deal, but he just needed eighty five thousand to unlock some permit to get the five hundred million, so he could come back home and live with his princess forever. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think so, you know. And the more I asked her, you know, and it's so sad. It's like uh, she's. It kind of haunts me to this day. I go to pick her up to take her to closing, and she and I keep asking her, "Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to do this?" And she goes, "You know, I just don't want to be alone." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, oh. You know what I mean? I, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, I have a very jovial personality, if you can't tell, but I try to be happy in everything I do. And we're dealing with life and death matters and sad things. And like, there's crazy stats in senior living that just blow your mind. Like 60% of people living in senior living don't have a visitor. So think about that. We got families and kids and life and, we, you know, we complain about how busy you are. And then one day, no one ever comes to see you again. More than, what? You know, I mean, life is short, you know, you got to enjoy it. And, I, you know, I, I love my job because I all, have always loved real estate. And now I get the joy of helping these families too with, their, with this burden. You know, you talked about the kids and the shag carpet and all this. A lot of the times the burden falls on one of the kids that's still in the hometown. Mm -hmm. Other kids live 400 miles away. So they all think that the sister who's in town, the Santa Mom's deteriorating is crazy. Oh, you're crazy. That's in your head. It's not as bad as you think. But that kid, that's here, when I say kid, she's 60s. But the yeah. kid here is dealing with mom and taking her to the appointments, right? That burden, it, it's a very emotional time for families. And that's why I'm talking about this. I want to work with the best of the best, right? The people that would rather lose a deal to save face than to try to get one over on somebody. That's not it at all. This is more put people first and do the right thing. And the, and the, in real estate, we already know that. The, you know, the houses that need the updating is where we, that's our opportunity to add value, right? Yeah. So that, that's what I'm doing. Wow. I love that, man. That's such a, that's a good thing. What's a, that was a, a, a great story there. What's another story you got? <laughs> <laughs> a cr the craziest one is a lady yeah. sold me a house that was worth 250 grand for 50 grand. And, she, and, and I'll never forget, because this was like a nice house in great condition. And she goes, I need you to have a seat before we tell the story. <laughs> and I'm usually asking them to take a seat. And she's like, I need you. So she goes through the whole thing. And long story short, her husband did something really bad. And the FBI came after him. He fled the country for years. And listen, and she, and she was rich, right? She was rich. Here's a crazy thing. She spent millions of dollars that they had over those years when they finally caught him in the divorce, now she owed him half of that money, even though he was gone on the run. <laughs> and, oh, oh, and it gets better. I'm not even close to done to that story. From prison, he took the house out of her name and put it back into a trust name that he had. So when you're in prison, you have plenty of time on your hands, right? So he got the county convinced that, the, that it should go through the deed, or the, the quick claim deed, quick claim deed, right? And he got to put it into his name. So then she had to fight with lawyers to get her house back from, in essence, herself. <laughs> uh, we've had, we had one where uh, a lady uh, signed as a wife and it was really his worker. <laughs> it was a mobile closing. And we go to clean out the house and the wife shows up. The wife never, the husband never told the wife what was happening. That one took a couple, you know, we're dealing with humans, right? Um, oh, I, I've got to go. Can, I'm going to think of the right way to say this. Two sisters, the brother passed away. He had a three bedroom house, a master bedroom, uh, an adult movie room and a prayer room. <laughs> the sisters, the sisters said, we're not going back in there again. Just make us an offer. <laughs> it's, it's humans. We're dealing with humans, right? 
<laughs> takes I mean, all types and just will go around, doesn't it? I don't know. I like it. If everything was normal, I wouldn't like it as much. It's, it's, that's the fun part. You're unlocking. I'm like I always like to say I'm a puzzle piece. I either fit in really easy or I don't. And either right. way. Now, where are you are you seeing on, on the issues, on any issues you had? Are you seeing issues with family members that are stepping in and trying to get emotional and stop things from happening because of greed or anything else all the time, I'm sure? Always. You know, in St. Louis, we got a lot of Catholic families. There's a lot of families that have six, seven, eight kids. One of them's not ready to be, you know, ha doesn't grieve the same way, you know, or doesn't, they're not ready for this with mom, that, you know, that things aren't the way they used to be. You, you're... You, you have to be loving and kind in what you do, right? But you also have to help them get to their goal of getting that house liquidated back, you know, for the for mom's care. And so I teach very good strategies on how to work with that person who's not ready um, and, and how, to, how to show them that. Well, a good example is let's say that, and this would be in an, in an inherited situation, but if one person thinks it's worth a million dollars and there's four kids, that one that's worth, a, the one that thinks it's worth a million, I always say, you should buy your brothers and sister out for 750 grand and then you can do whatever you want. And, oh, oh, oh. You, you see their tone changing, you know, there's strategies for all of this. Um, I, I like a loaded question too. I ask, uh, what color kitchen would you guys, because if they ever say, well, we might rehab it ourselves. So what color kitchen would you put in here? And they're like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you're going to rehab the house, right? What color kitchen would you put? In? And they have no, they're woefully unprepared to, to rehab a house. You know, and, and, and it's not even the, sometimes it's the money, but it's more the time. Who has time to come chase down 27 contractors and get three bids? And by the way, this, these families are wanting to get money quickly, not spend money to try to get a couple extra dollars. Have you ever uh, heard of something called the uh, cost versus value guide? Yeah. It's an amazing tool. You know, you spend 10 grand on a deck and it's worth 7,600. Well, even... <laughs> And, and, and almost everything's that way. There's hardly anything that actually gives, there's one thing that I know of that gives you more value than what you spend. And, and I'll tell you right here, it's, it's uh, landscaping up to $1,500 is the only thing that actually gives you more street value than what you spent. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a story, Scott. I mean, these I, I, are the I don't ones I can it. say on film, you know what I mean? Say what again? These are the ones I can say on camera. If yeah. we were, you know. <laughs> we're going to have to share some time when I'm up there and, and hear some more of these interesting stories. So, so where are you, are you seeing, st is most of the deals you're doing primarily right around your area, or are you doing stuff in other parts of the country for the most part? Uh, for me, locally, it's St. Louis, but what's happening with my lead sources is that they're starting to ask me, do you have a buyer in Albuquerque? Do you have a buyer in San Diego? Do you, you know? And so, yes, when you're in real estate long enough, we know a ton of people we're friendly with, but I'm trying to find the best of the best in every city. Cool. What's the best way for, uh, for people to reach out to you to either a, I don't say, I don't say register a territory, but get on your referral list or things like that for you. Yeah. Uh, momshouse.com. It's easy, man. Momshouse.com. I loved that when uh, Ben sent that over to me, I was like, Oh, brilliant. You know why it's that way why? in the industry. Even if dad is the one that's still alive, I swear the caretakers, the people in the industry, me, we all refer to, what, what are we gonna do with mom's house? That's what we call it. Yeah. That's because mom is the caretaker of the home. She was the, you know what I mean? It's, the, it's mom's house, that's what it's called. And yeah. so that's who we're helping. I, I, I love that name too. I like any good domain name that a seven year old could spell <laughs> is usually pretty good. And this one's on the nose of what I'm doing, so. <laughs> could, not, could not hit it harder on the on the nail head than for you there philip well i i love what you're doing man once again everybody check out momshouse.com we've got listeners all across the country on our radio networks and watching the youtube and of course listen to the podcast so highly highly take the time reach out uh you know schedule a phone call see if you're a fit um it, it, you know you probably want to have some experience in, in doing some real estate stuff so that yeah, you know yeah. what you're, you're doing for sure. And, and for the most part, but that's one of the things I love about uh, Ben, your partner there, you know, Ben for years, just an absolute high quality guy. Same thing with you, that uh, you've got, I, I honestly have to say that sometimes you guys put yourself last in a lot of the deal flow you're doing. Cause it's, hey, it's the right thing to do, or, Hey, it's just not a fit and let's move on or refer it out to somewhere else and go from there. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. So. Well, Philip, thanks so much, man, for coming on the Note Closer Show today. Love, love it. Uh, I'll be reaching out to you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely. And then let's let's talk some more 
once okay. you get a little bit more further along, we'll talk some more and uh, yeah. maybe hear me on one of our Monday night, Note Night in America webinars. How's that sound? Sounds perfect. I would love to. Thank you for having me. Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. Have All right, guys, day. that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closure. Like I said, check out momshouse.com. Uh, get on the phone with Philip and then see if it'll fit for us. See if it's an extra way to find some deals and add some deals into your deal flow. And uh, if you go out and take some action, guys, help some people, make it a win-win. And uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody.